All right, today we're gonna to be going over for loops, our first control structure. We've done a lot with variable initialization and print statements, but now it's time to put that into some level of controlled, maybe repetitive action. <clears throat> so this is a general formatting of our for loop. We start with the word for, and then in parentheses, a variable, condition, and change separated by semicolons. And then between brackets, right under the for loop, is a body of code to be executed. So these could be print statements, perhaps. So let's say we did have an assignment that was told us we needed to print out the statement, hello world, a hundred times. Now you could say, oh, I'll just copy and paste it into my computer 100 times. But what if it was a million? And beyond that, it's a hundred lines of code on your computer, and it's not a very elegant way of writing code. So instead, we put this print statement, system.out.println, hello world, in the body of our for loop, and we will turn our for loop into a counter of sorts. There's a lot of uses for a for loop. You can count through things, you can, you can iterate, um, display data numerically, do all sorts of things. But one of the most common uses is as a counter. So for this variable, you guys have been doing this a lot, we're just going to initialize a new variable to keep count, which will be accessible from inside the for loop and changeable through this change. So let's do int, make a new integer, i, which is i or j is the standard convention for a for loop, equals zero. So when our computer first encounters the for loop, it initializes a new variable i to be zero. As you can see in this looping, it is never going to come back or reinitialize that variable. After it's initialized, that's it. Now we need our condition. This is a Boolean expression, which can return true or false. So for this, if we wanted to print out hello world 100 times, we would want to do this until i is less than 100. Now we don't really know how i is updating yet, but it'll make a lot more sense when we do this change. All we need to know is that in the first step of the process, at least, we make the variable i is 0. 0 is less than 100 returns true, because it is true, 0 is less than 100. So we go over to this body and we execute hello world. Then we go to this change. Now we need to find a way to update i to eventually qualify this conditional as false. So what can we do here? We can say i plus plus. A simple iterator which makes i go up one time every time this body is executed. So we go through here, i plus plus. Now i equals one. Does it qualify the condition still? Yes. And in fact, you'll find that it qualifies this condition exactly 100 times before it is no longer less than 100, it executes as false, and then we break away from the for loop and it is over.